One of the chief motivations for the subject of dynamical systems lies in the frustration associated with exact quantitative methods for solving systems. It is a qualitative approach that is going to be our goal and our great advantage in terms of trying to understand dynamical systems. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, consider a very explicit example of a dynamical system, a continuous time system that is represented by a simple differential equation on one variable, x as a function of t. Let's say you've got the differential equation dx dt equals cosine of x minus 2 sine of x. Now, don't worry about where that comes from, but do worry about how you would solve such an equation trying to find an exact quantitative closed form solution for x is really quite a challenge. Now, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to tell you what the solution is. I claim that x as a function of t equal to negative 2 times arctangent of quantity 2 minus square root of 5 times the hyperbolic tangent of quantity root 5 over 2 times quantity of constant c minus t. All of that, you could plug that in, check that it solves that differential equation. I'll wait. Okay, now that you're done with that, oh, wow, uh, where did that come from? How did I get that? It took quite a few tricks to get that one to work out. But even if we can find this, what does it mean? How do we interpret that solution? What does that constant C really represent? What does this have to do with a, an initial condition? What happens as t goes to infinity? Does this have any sort of limit? That's not clear. And even this is really, really optimistic. A small change in that differential equation, and forget about it, you're stuck. There's no way you're going to get that exact quantitative solution. Now, that's a continuous time example. What happens if we look in discrete time? Well, here's a simple example of a discrete time dynamical system, something called a recurrence relation. It is of the form x n plus 1 equals square root of quantity 3 plus x n. Now here, what we're looking for is a solution x as a function of discrete time n. Now in this case, Finding an explicit closed form solution is not really the challenge. I could just start with an initial condition x0, and then this gives me an instruction set. x1 is square root of 3 plus x0, and then x2 is, well, I plug in that value for x1, and I keep going. xn is square root of 3 plus square root of 3 plus square root of 3, yada, yada, yada. I keep going until I'm at the end. I've done this n times. So finding that closed form solution is not the challenge. What is difficult is interpreting that closed form solution. What does it actually mean? What is the limit as n goes to infinity? Does that make sense? Is that something we can compute? Now, both of these are explicit examples where I can write down an equation. Consider the following implicit situation. Let's say that we have a pendulum and it's damped, got a lot of friction, and the bob of the pendulum is magnetic. And then what I'm going to do is put a couple of other magnets arranged around somewhere. I'm going to take this pendulum, pull it up, and then let it go. What happens? Now, we could try to get a differential equation to model this. We would have to know a lot about the types of magnets we have, what the magnetic fields are. We'd have to pull out our e &M textbooks, write down some equations. It would be a real mess. And even if we did that, even if we did all that work, got those differential equations, guess what? You're not going to be able to solve those explicitly. It's going to be terrible to try to write down a solution. And if you could solve it explicitly, interpreting it, mm -mm, nope, that's tough. What we need is a different approach. We need a better way. And the big idea that motivates what we're going to do in dynamical systems is this. Even if you can find an exact quantitative model and solution, it might not be helpful. And what we need to do is pass from the exact and the quantitative to the qualitative. And we're going to learn some methods for finding qualitative solutions that help predict long-term behavior 
at a system level. Now, what is that? How do we do that? That is what comes next. We are going to emphasize the qualitative. What is left when the quantitative fails? We're not going to give up in the face of complexity. Qualitative methods are going to be great. They're going to be very, very effective and very, very efficient. In the end, we're going to have an elegant set of techniques.